There is something mysterious about magic and alchemy that has always struck the human mind. Be it summoning demons, turning iron to gold, there was always something that made the imagination go wild. Frankly, in today's day and age, we grew up from that thinking. But this still can be seen as entertainment. That's where all those fantasy me media comes into play. Card games are not immune to this fantastic medium and have their share fair of magic. Heck, in Yu-Gi-Oh! there's an entire type called Spellcasters. However, it's when the inspiration is taken from actual occultists, when you know this is going to be fun. Okay, enough rambling, let's talk about the Invoked Engine. The Invoked cards were first introduced in the Fusion and Forces booster set back in February 2017 and quickly became a strong meta contender. The Archetype focused on summoning a great variety of fusion monsters. Due to its small size and enormous flexibility, it has its usage in a variety of decks. Most noteworthy is the Windwitch Invoked variant, which, piloted by Michael Forner, took 4th place in the 2017 World Championship, and, most recently, in Shadow Invoked and Eldritch Invoked. The engine was never really hit by the ban list in DCG, however, the OCG is a different story. On the October 2017 list, Alistair the Invoker, the only main deck monster, was limited to 1, hindering the deck's ability to maintain momentum with subsequent fusion summons for time. Since then, Alistair was removed from the list. Ok, now let's talk briefly about how the engine works. Like mentioned previously, the entirety of the invoked archetype focuses on fusion summons of various monsters. The most basic of the fusions require Alistair the Invoker plus a monster of the corresponding attribute. Those are the ones most commonly used. The other two monsters, whose usage is limited, require an invoked monster and a monster special summon from the extra deck, or Alistair the Invoker and a fusion monster. What ties all of this together is the fusion and spell invocation. Now, let's go over each of the cards used in the engine that we'll be talking about. This is Alistair the Invoker, a level 4 dark spellcaster type monster of 1000 attack and 1800 defense. The full effect is on screen right now. In short, Alistair searches out invocation and can be discarded to boost efficient monsters attack and defense by 1000 points. While on topic of invocation, this is the card. In short, it allows the user to summon an invoked monster, banish an opponent's monster from the grave, and reset Alice to play for the next turn. This is Magical Meltdown, the fueled spell of the deck. Its effect allows the player to search out Alistar and it prevents same disruption done to the upcoming fusion summons. When it comes to the fusion monsters, it depends on the deck and the current metagame. The most prominent are usually invoked Mechaba and invoked Purgatrio. The build of the engine is, as usual, straightforward. Three copies of Magical Meltdown, three copies of Alistar, and one or two copies of Invocation, followed by whichever fusion monsters you want to summon. The greatest pro of this engine is its rather small size. It has only 8 cards to its name. This gives a lot of room for other engines and staples to be added to, into the deck. The sheer flexibility of the Invoke cards cannot be downplayed. The materials for the fusions are as generic as they can be, with the exception of Alistair. So, one has freedom in choosing the materials needed. Invocation, due to its effect, also doubles as a disruption, banishing cards from the opponent's grave to use as fusion material. The biggest downside of this engine is the fact that the normal summon has to be committed to Alistar in order for it to work. It can work if the deck using it is strongly focused on special summons and doesn't require the normal summon, but it's still a detriment. The next issue with the engine is its meta dependency. This is especially true when you consider the disruptive nature of invocation. Some fusion monsters are better during some formats than others due to the meta of the time. The greatest asset of this deck is flexibility, makes the value choice for almost every deck. Seriously, if you have space for this engine, there aren't many cards that you can use in this place. However, the fact that it has to use up to normal sun makes me recommend this to deck that don't rely on it or have effects that allow multiple, like Shadows or Eldritch. And that will be it for today. I'm actually kind of proud how this episode turned out. I think I finally found the formula for any further episodes. It only took me, what, 12 <laughs> episodes to do so? And anyway, thank you everyone for watching. Remember to leave a comment or like, share if you fancy. See you next time. Bye-bye.